I was watching a video of a speech given by the late Danish cartoonist Kurt Westergaard at the Danish Parliament Building in 2015. He was talking about his infamous Muhammad cartoon, and he made some interesting points about satire. He set up his discussion with a simple observation. Satire is loved, but also hated. Then he told a story about U.S. President Jimmy Carter and Soviet General Secretary Leonid Brezhnev in the 1970s to illustrate the difference between people who love satire and those who hate it. The American President Jimmy Carter and uh, Brezhnev met and uh, they came to a discussion about these cartoons in the newspapers. So um, Carter said, I like them and I collect them. I actually believe that I can learn something from them. I have two bookcases filled with cartoons. Brezhnev answered, I'm a collector also. I collect cartoonists. <laughs> I have, fa in fact, I have two camps full of them. Some leaders and one religion are more terrified of satire and mockery than they are of careful analysis and refutation. I sometimes I believe that the, the mighty ones on earth fear the, of the, the, the critical cartoon more than they fear analysis of their regime, their situation, because the drawing has an appeal that no analysis ha has. Think about Islam. You can write book after book after book, challenging Muhammad's claims and proving that he was a false prophet, and you probably won't be in much danger. But if you get artistic and satirical, like Salmon Rushdie with the Satanic Verses, or Theo Van Gogh with his film Submission, or Kurt Westergaard with his drawing of Muhammad, suddenly someone has to die. And someone apparently has to die, no matter how generous a nation has been. Denmark has received a large group of Muslims and given them everything that the Danish welfare state has to offer from money to accommodation and free education. The only thing we ask in return is that they respect our democratic traditions. But there's a huge misunderstanding here. When Muslims see someone mock their prophet, they think that they're being attacked or oppressed or excluded. Westergaard saw things quite differently. When we satirize Muslim fellow countrymen, this is not an act, an act of exclusion, but rather inclusion in Danish society, consistent with the way we satirize Danes in general. When we make fun of Muhammad, we're treating Muslims like we treat everyone else, because we make fun of things in Western society. Westerners who try to protect Muhammad from criticism are the ones who are telling Muslims you're not really part of what's going on here. When we make fun of Muhammad, we're telling Muslims, we expect you to live by the same rules that the rest of us live by. We expect you to be civilized because we all have to be civilized if civilization is going to work. When politicians and journalists insist that Muhammad is off limits, they're not honoring or respecting Muslims. They're accusing Muslims of being barbarians who are incapable of living by the same rules as everyone else. It's called the soft bigotry of low expectations. Politicians and journalists try to shield Muhammad because they don't think that his followers are able to function like normal people. They're the ones who are excluding Muslims from society. Ironically, then, those of us who openly mock the most obvious false prophet in history are showing respect to Muslims by not tiptoeing around their fake prophet, by not treating them like children, by not excluding them from the party. So I say to all of our Muslim friends, stop pretending that we're your enemies. Your enemies are the people who are striving to dehumanize you. They claim to be your friends, but actually, they think of you as their pets. You're not pets. You're created in the image of God. With that image 
comes certain responsibilities. Among those responsibilities is the responsibility not to slaughter people for making fun of the most obvious false prophet in history. Respect the cartoonists. They're trying to protect you from people who are trying to degrade you.